Welcome to uh, MX Graph Made Simple, Part 5. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the hierarchical layout. And um, most of what we're going to do uh, is not going to be actual coding, although I will show you some of the code. Uh, but we're going to just play with some of the variables um, so that you can see how that impacts uh, the graph. So here we have our typical uh, HTML setup under hierarchical example.html, uh, beginning of course with the world uh, with the head, the title actually I had left over. So we'll just fix that up. A hierarchical example. Of course we uh, set the base path. Uh, we load and initialize the library, and here's where our function begins. I'm sure you remember, first thing we do is we check if the browser is supported, otherwise we throw an error. Uh, and at this point is when we actually uh, create our graph. We throw in the rubber band tool, which allows us to select. Um, and now uh, we actually begin what's relevant to our layout. We set up the parent, which is get default parent. Although, of course, there are other parent options, but that's uh, what we're using for now. And here we start the layout, which is new MX hierarchical layout, and we call that on the graph. Again, I'm not going through all of the coding because you should have learned this in some of the other videos. And here we begin our update we're going to read into the graph hierarchy.xml. Read is a function that I've created. It's down here at the bottom of this file. And hierarchy.xml is a file that I've created uh, using a Python script that really gives us a nice XML example of the data in a simple organizational chart. Now here you have about 10 different uh, variables and we're actually going to play with these variables to see how they work. The first three variables all called on layout so layout.resizeParent equals false layout.moveParent equals false, layout.parentBorder equals zero. Those are all the default settings. Um, and we're not going to really give a good example of it because we're not going to be able to call resizeParent on this very simple um, graph. But suffice it to say that uh, resizeParent allows you to change the size of the parent. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if the graph requires the size to become larger. Uh, move parent would be if you've chosen to resize parent and you've set it to true, uh, then the parent would move if required in order to um, best accommodate the layout that we're looking for. And the parent border is uh, the size of the border that we would put around the parent if we needed to resize it. Um, but we're going to leave these all at the default, uh, which are false, false, and zero. Obviously, if I didn't type anything in, um, if we had just completely erased these, it would function exactly the same because those are all the default. So here we have a typical example of an organizational chart with the president on top, four vice presidents, and each vice president has four team members. We're going to show you how we can manipulate uh, the layout based on some of the variables that we set up in our script. So layout intracell spacing, its default is 30. If I change it to 10,
you'll notice all of the team members at the very bottom have gotten closer together. The reason for that is, is that the intracell, uh, obviously as the name implies, the spacing of the vertices within the cell will be changed to 10. If I change it to 100, you get the idea. Let's bring it back to 20 to make it easy to see. Now we're going to enter rank cell spacing. And as the name implies, that is going to be the space between the different ranks. Now it's set at 50. Let's bring it down to 30. You see president is much closer to vice president, which is much closer to their team members. Now, inter-hierarchy spacing would obviously be the spacing between two different hierarchies. In my simple example, we only have one hierarchy. Parallel edge spacing, we learned before what parallel edges are. That means that two edges that connect the same two vertices. Uh, so if you have two edges that connect them, you can space them differently. Layout orientation. Right now it's from north to south. We can also do it from west to east. And that will flip it sideways. Fine tuning, as the name implies, is going to give you a much nicer layout, but it's not always necessary. So let me just show you what it would look like if we set this to false. You see the vice presidents are much closer to each other, but it makes it much more difficult to read the relationship between the vice presidents and its team members and that's because MX graph is only cycling through its algorithm one time uh, making the very simplest calculations however if we reset it to fine-tuning is true it runs through its algorithm a number of times to make sure that Everything is in its most legible, um, organized, possible way of setting it up. This next variable, uh, tighten to source, I haven't exactly figured out what it does. To demonstrate how layout that disable edge style works, I'm going to copy and paste an edge style. So here you have var edge style. Um, for an existing um, graph, you need to start with graph.getStyleSheet and then .get default edge style. And then we're going to put edge style. We're going to have the style edge as top to bottom. So this is what it would look like um, if it's set to false, which is the default. So there you have a top to bottom um, edge style. Now I can have it ignore all edge styles by setting layout disable edge style to true. And that changes the edge style to be its default edge style as opposed to the edge style which I had tried to force on it. The next one is layout.traverse ancestors. Since I have a very simple example, we won't really be able to show it to you, but it allows you to go uh, deeper into cells um, in order to set up this graph. 
layout that model is the actual model for this layout. Layout dot edges set are the set of all edges that are found within this layout. And finally, we have layout dot execute. So bottom line is you haven't seen all of the examples, but you should have some idea now of some of the variables and what they do in the hierarchical model.